Welcome to the Tuck Cast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasitia Fly Shop with locations in Bryson City and Silva, North Carolina. Be sure to follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasitia Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and YouTube at Tuckasitia Fly Shop for the latest information and instructional videos. Be sure to visit tuckflyshop.com for all things fly fishing in Western North Carolina and beyond. Today's episode is brought to you by Norvice. From the original 1970s prototype to their new legacy stainless steel vice, Norvice has been committed to one thing, efficiency. The company's long-standing slogan, tie better flies faster, truly encompasses what the Norvice fly tying system does. The good folks at Norvice believe you deserve to tie your flies consistently and in less time because of the ease and benefits engineered into this outstanding tying system. For more information, visit www.nor-vice.com and check them out on YouTube to see how you can maximize your tying time by relying on the functions and benefits of the tested and true Norvice. I'm your host, Shannon Big Mess Messer, joined by Bobby the Bernard Wonder Bennett, Coach Dale Diesel Collins, and Jack of All Trouts, Jack Tamborski. Psych. Everything was correct on that except for <laughs> Jack, who's in Bend, Oregon. Hope he's doing well out there. Guys, I hope everybody's doing good. We have a special in-studio guest up from Charlotte, North Carolina. If you folks have been to any of our uh, fly fishing uh, festivals here lately, you've seen some of his artwork here on display. If you've been to the Virginia Wine and Fly Fishing Festival, you've seen some of the work there as well. We're talking about Hooked Fly Company, Mr. Brian Hester. Brian, welcome to the Tuck Cast with a Splash thank of Bourbon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad to have you, man. It's awesome. It's hot in here. <laughs> Shit. It's because you haven't stopped moving. Man, man yeah. You're, you're, you're running around, man. You're wound up like a clock, dude. <laughs> or top. You're wound up like a top. Like That's a, what it is. Like a top. Absolutely. It's a great day, man. Beautiful Take day. Take a deep so. breath. It is a beautiful day. Shannon, beautiful day. Shannon is fresh off the water. He, uh, yeah. he generously switched out on a trip with me and uh, bailed me out of a double day situation and took the afternoon trip. I had the morning trip. So we enjoyed some 52 degree water, fantastic conditions. Oh, couldn't be better. Yeah, no man, man. fish game, rising. It was an incredible amazing. day. And, and and with that being said, it's you know it's it's October and, and there's going to be plenty of double days coming up here. So spread it out right now, so we're not killing each other. You know, just wearing each other out. Um, so just kind of spreading that out and just just helping out everybody here. But a great day, good good folks. A lot of trips out today, and it's October, man. It's October. It's here, it's and here. it's not hot water. No, it's nice. The water is perfect. Last what three years have been hot. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of leaves this afternoon. Oh uh, yeah. And did you? No. Oh, we were, was, wind wasn't blowing yet. A little bit of leaves. I did have a call the other day. Yeah. Have the leaves started to bother the water? Like, are the leaves in the water yet? Yeah. And I was just like, dude, it's fall. It's gonna happen. That's and right. It's gonna happen quick. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And it is happening quick. Yes. Uh, you can tell there. Oh, there's yeah. already trees out there that are bare. Yeah. I was glad for it today too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, absolutely, no. But the fishing was great. Two degrees. Yeah, the the fish are super. Thirty eight degree air temp this morning. Yeah, it was chilly. Yeah, so, it's gonna be chilly tonight. Oh, yeah. Over that yeah. tomorrow morning. Cold oh yeah, that'll be good. You gonna go fish tomorrow? Absolutely. Where are you going? I'm actually going uh, to the Pigeon um, okay. near Lake Logan. Cool. Yeah, West West Fork of the Pigeon Delayed Harvest. So we we talked, somebody was in the shop today and said that place was a madhouse. Was it a zoo? Yesterday, I'd you know, say tomorrow it's going to be just pummeled, probably. Yeah, right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. I bet you if think? a man set probably. up a food truck over there, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know this. Did Apparently, you know? within a mile of the parkway, you can set up, or within a mile of any federal national park boundary, you can set up like a hot dog stand and sell alcohol. No, mm -hmm. you crush it up there because, um, a friend of mine, uh, was going to set one up there. You know where that electrical shop is there at uh, Barber's? He had thought about Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> He's yes. going to do it there. The, the Generac place. Yes. That used to be a gas station when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah sorry, absolutely, of course. But, yeah, everything was something. Different. But, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, it's, I don't know. It's technically, yeah. you could over there, I guess. I don't know what the zoning is for you're, that. You're more than a mile down from the Blue Ridge Park. Right. Oh, yeah, you're several. But you're also right there to Shine and Rock National so, I mean, Forest. So why, I well, what, what's, like, you can't be within a mile? What, no, you can do it, like. I, I, like it doesn't matter what the zoning is in that county. If you're within a mile, you can sell whatever. So, okay, so it like throws out the county stuff. I think so. It's like an ETJ. You know what that is, Brian? I was about to say, what I have no idea. What is an ETJ? Extraterrestrial 
jurisdiction. Ah, uh, nice. So wonderful. I mean, somebody's going to be listening to this podcast, and mm-hmm. there's going like, to be hot dog stands yeah, everywhere. There's going to be hot dog stands right out where and serving coffee. And, hey, look, somebody wants donuts. to put a food truck up there where I'm guiding. I'm all about it. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. That's so, awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about the number of people are there and where that's at, mm-hmm. uh, relatively speaking to the proximity to Tuckasegee close to town, that you know that one's out there a bit. So yeah, there's um, a bunch of peanut butter sandwiches getting consumed. Oh, I bet. There. I bet that there's some mm-hmm. there's some sandwiches going on out there. Maybe some some nabs. Some, some, some nabs. What we got there? What we got? It. Some squares. Um, the real peanut butter. I think. So those I think. Those. Nico? Good ones. The yeah, John. These are good. Yeah. John had the vending company. You know, I think. I think he. Um, Sorry, folks. Are those left from like a year ago? When do they expire? Oh, hey, John's been known to give us <laughs> some expired stuff. Hey, it's okay. It's good. Sorry, folks. But the expired stuff eats just the same, Bobby. Yes. I saw a video today where they were uh, experimenting with uh, foods that had been basically discontinued, but they'd found them on eBay, and so they were like, they had like the clear Pepsi. And no way. The uh, sour cream and onion. Nineteen ninety six. Called said they want their drink back. It was pretty cool to see a some of the sour stuff. cream and onion Dorito. Is yeah, they, really? they, they, I don't uh, even. Yeah, I guess I guess it was back happened. in the nineties. They had one, and wow. uh, so it was basically they were they were saying should this come back, and the uh, the Doritos are still sold in Japan. So if you go there, you can get them. Apparently, but, yeah, it was kind of cool to we'll see. I never did the green ketchup. Uh, I never would. I never would touch it. Yeah, it had to be red. So and people go they go nuts for that stuff. So the uh, the, the sodas overseas. Are different than the sodas here. Yeah, the formulas are. are different. The cans are different. They actually, the cans, use sugar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they, but their formulations, like over there, a Mountain Dew is actually a citrus drink. Over in the uh, um, in the Arab mm-hmm. world, over there, it's it's entirely different for sure. In Gastonia, they call it Sundrop. <laughs> well, East Tennessee, they call it Doctor Enough. <laughs> Doctor Enough. <laughs> is it a soda or a pop? Or no. A soda pop? Ooh, what is it, Brian? Uh. It's a. I call it a drink. Yeah, I, I call it a soda. That's right. <laughs> it's a pop yeah, if you're from the Midwest, right? Oh, I pop, pop out there. Think yeah. Ohio says pop. It's yeah. a different. Yeah, I learned that when I got out to the fleet. They yeah. called it the something. fleet. Yeah, you get out to the fleet. It's Called different. It. That's like the league. You get out yeah. to the fleet, man. <laughs> I made it up to the fleet. <laughs> I made it to the fleet, baby. It's a, you can call it a, E1, baby. <laughs> in the fleet. <laughs> I was I was I was E3 when I got to the fleet. Were you really? I was. When you got there. Yeah, when I got. Was that when they airdropped you on the ship? Yeah, I got airdropped on the ship. That's right. Yeah. And you, so you're. Where'd you go out at? Hopefully not E1. No, E4. They locked down our rate. That was when they were doing the uh, the VSIs, mm-hmm. voluntary separation incentive. They were closing the bases. Yeah. And what they would do, they would freeze your um, your rate, and you, and you would take your advancement exam, and you would P and A, which is pass, not advance. P and A, P&A co- and pass not P and A cotton P and A. So what they were doing was <laughs> they they weren't advancing nobody. They were keeping everything at the rate they currently was. So you would yeah. take your advancement exam every six months, but it. Hmm. Did you it Christmas tree that thing? Hmm? Yeah, you wasn't pushing. <laughs> you kind of wondered there toward the end. Did it really it matter? matter? It didn't really matter. But that's what they were doing during the, Cl- the Clinton administration in uh, with the military cutbacks. So it does affect. Um, you know those things like that. And people don't see that when you're at home, but it, it's it's real interesting how those little decisions trickle down and it and it does affect the oh, person. Yeah. And, That's and right. That was that was for sure. It affects the uh, your supply chain. You know mm-hmm. we talk about our supply chain right now with product, yeah. but but tremendously uh, Lee, you start to look at the uh, um, the type of bolts that you would use on a on ten inch steam riser. Yeah. Uh, the nuts and bolts. That's pretty doggone important. Yeah. Um, when think. you don't have the right stuff. Oh, they learned the hard way, um, unfortunately, in Bahrain. But um, Bahrain, um, you know, when you can't get this, <laughs> the proper really well done, Bahrain. Yeah, right? yeah, when you can't get the parts to you know to fix stuff and keep it going, that's an issue. Yeah, and, and a lot of times when they when they talk about cutting military, that's exactly what is what happens behind the scenes is mm-hmm. is those things like that. You can't maintain your equipment properly. So mm-hmm. um, speaking of supply chain, yeah, we got another email from Orvis today. Oh, I missed it. Really? Oh, no, I missed about it. About no more, no ASP, AAP orders for the rest of the year. We can't order anything. So, folks, like. what that means is what's here <laughs> is, is here. here. Just like them pumpkin spice latte 
Flies. What's in the bins is in the bins. When they gone, they gone. They gone. Supplies they are gone. running out. You know, so come speaking in, up got, of uh, yeah. supply chain, yeah. follow up on last week's episode, talk about my car. Okay. All, all right. right. So I've got so I've, I, you know, I've put a lot of money into this repair deal already, so I'm not paying for these airbags to be. So I've decided <laughs> I'm going to replace these myself. All right. Because I'm a mechanic. <laughs> nice. Right. You're nah. a mechanic? No, nah, there's not much mechanic about me at all. So, like, I'm sitting here asking Bobby, what do you think? Well, so anyway, go to order the part I need. Go and do a coil conversion. I'm going to take these airbags out, put the coils in. Looks like an easy job. The hardest part, getting it here. So, oh, seriously? Yeah, they're back ordered. Everything's so, back ordered. So, if you, if y'all... If you're on your way to the Tuckasee de- 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 Delayed Harvest and you see a Lexus GX on blocks out in the front yard in Webster, that's my house. <laughs> Violating mm. probably three or four different codes in Webster. But, yeah, so that's the situation there. Two to three weeks, one car family. We'll make it work. Absolutely. We're going to put JD's automotive sign out there. <laughs> I like that. Automotive and boat sales. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, if anybody comes by the shop at 7 a.m. and sees me in here tying, it's because my wife dropped me off on her way to work. And uh, don't bother me yet. <laughs> Wait till 8. <laughs> no, I thought you just spying on a sidewalk artist. <clears throat> oh, that's happening, too. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Talked to the police chief today. Oh, yeah? He said he thinks it's a great idea to have uh, Bryson and Madeline come up and do some artwork. I think it's a great idea. Yep. Yep. Why not let the kids come and paint all the sidewalks? That's I what think we're going to do. Great. Absolutely. So we're not painting them, but chalk them. We're going to have chalk a kids' them. sidewalk chalk festival. Oh, that's cool. I think it'd be awesome. Yep. That's outstanding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. If adults yeah, can cool. do it, so if can the kids. If adults can do it, so can the kids. Can we call them adults? <laughs> I don't oh, know. That's <laughs> not go there. But yeah, uh, man, cool. <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, it's a great show last week. A lot of, lot of, lot of funny, man. My, my phone was blowing up. Man, how do you, man? Your phone blows up all this stuff, but I, nobody talks to me about it. About what? What are we talking? Well, about? I don't get no messages about like because I'm big mess. You're, you're too famous, man. Too legit to quit. Hey, you need to get hey, you a Finsta account. A who? A Finsta. What's that? Fake Insta. Oh, <laughs> no, I got a real one. <laughs> but you're, one. you're getting blown up, man. I am getting blown up. So they would say they were laughing. They really enjoyed it. It's a good, good podcast. Yeah, right? some people came in and bought the fugly bug. Because oh, we and, it. and then today the guy came up, and picked up the clear water rod that he was smart enough to buy before coming here, and he goes, "You got any more of them pumpkin spice flies? They gone." I'm like, "Thanks, Dale." <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, "What'd you yeah. name that thing?" I don't know. You put it out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's pumpkin spice latte now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. So fishing report. Fishing report. It's good. It's good. Awesome. Water tent, fifty two degrees. You need to know. Just come fish. Um, you know, somebody asked today is is fishing. Um, you know, they were asking about fishing in Cherokee, and I was like, man, fishing in Cherokee is going to be great, but it's going to be great everywhere else too. So, uh, we had fifty two degree water temperature this morning on the Western North Carolina Fly Trail. We had thirty eight degree air temp to start, and it quickly warmed up to fifty five by I'd say ten thirty air temp. So, you know, you want to layer up. It's going to be chilly starts. So, Brian, in the morning, if you leave early, do you bring a jacket? Oh, yeah. Okay. Look. Oh, yeah, I'm a boonie. I will, oh, yeah, man, I got chocos. Look, it's 30 look, degrees. That, like I said before, you can play <laughs> JV all your life, or you can get off the bench and play varsity. Oh, man. So. Happy, happy over here. Always yeah. prepared. Um, so, uh, but, yeah, no, top water. I mean, immediately this morning, water temp didn't matter. Fish were rising. So, it was. That's uh, outstanding. Yeah, it was a good start. So That's great. Yeah. It's such a magical time of the year. Magical. It's magical. It's not I mean, Christmas yet. I was like, Happ- <laughs> happiest time of the year. What's his well, name? It is, it is for the fly shop. Frank Sinatra. Happ- in my happiest time. It really is, though. But you're right. A lot of different things will work, and that's the beauty of it. So if you like the bobber fish, bobber fish. Mm-hmm. If you like the dry dropper, dry dropper. If you like Streamers, the dry fly, Euro. Do it. I mean, everything's in Whatever play. Whatever trips your trigger. Everything's in play. Well, and that's the thing. I told somebody about the late harvest the other day is – it's a great opportunity. I may be repeating something I said. It's a great op- on last week's great opportunity to get out there, try a new skill, but you're going to catch fish while you're learning. Yes, I agree so with that. You're going to figure win. out what works. Mm-hmm. That's right. Always, you're going to figure yeah. out what works and what don't. Yeah. So yeah. I agree. Well, excellent. Awesome. Well, the reason we're here. Why are we here? Why are we here? We're here to talk to Brian. Somebody All right. Told me to show up, and here I am. That's, here I'm kind of like you, Bobby. I'm like, <laughs> here I am. 
Who's got the questions? We're going to wing it. <laughs> wing it. <laughs> Shannon nice. looked at me. Like, like, you, that was the, you serious, Clark? <laughs> yeah, that was, that's around the corner too, man. <laughs> that movie is so, around the corner. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, Brian Hester, Hooked Fly. So our special guest Company. today. Hooked Fly Co. Co. Company. Yep. Um, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. What, where, where, where you live? I think we mentioned Charlotte earlier. So, tell yeah. us, yeah, just let's get started. My residence is in Charlotte. Uh, I'm a 27 year veteran of public public instruction. Okay, so to, so to speak. Yeah, I'm a visual arts teacher. Been teaching for 27 years. I'm presently at Myers Park High School, and uh, I run the Anglers Club there, which is the basically the only fly fishing club in the in the southeast right now as far as high school really yeah it's huh. quite nice it's awesome i've got an amazing principal that yeah. that fly fishes as well and and you know kids are not supposed to be around hooks water and transportation so he <laughs> we figured out a way to to kind of get around it and uh and i've been doing a lot of really wonderful things with yeah. uh with the kids exposing kids that wouldn't normally have that opportunity mm -hmm. and you know Teaching visual arts right now is just an absolute dream through COVID. <laughs> just yeah. phenomenal. Makes it tough, right? The glorified Bob Ross right here. <laughs> I love me some Bob put, Ross. Put you a happy uh, little tree start, in. Yeah, well, I mean, I opened up that Pandora's box for yes, you right yes, there. Absolutely. So. Well, tell us a little bit about that, man. What's it like being an art teacher these days? Uh, just. I mean, everybody's an artist, right? <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yes. Everybody's an artist. Uh being on a Zoom platform with my kids uh, is just, I mean, it's wonderful. So you're seeing little, you know, two and a half inch screens of faces. And some don't even turn their, their you know, video on. So you don't even have a clue what they're looking like. Can you hear me? Can, you, can anybody hear me? Or they keep their the mics on off. Yeah. <laughs> or the, the best is, you know, the kids will actually sign on. And then they... And then they bounce and go do whatever. They go crawl back in bed or whatever. <laughs> so when you're calling on them and you're getting That's probably what crickets, uh, you know, then I just go ahead and say absent. I, so, I, I did see something the other day that the Brady Bunch had the Zoom thing way before everybody else. They you know, did. Like, Holy they cow. Did. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> heaven. Yeah. They were looking down at each other, you know. That's like, right. <laughs> looking uh, looking like, down. That's right. Yeah. Holy smokes, man. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right, man. Hey, it's like uh, like Star Trek, man. This is how all their buttons were. It was a screen, and right. they just touched it, right? I and mean, LeVar, all this stuff comes happens. LeVar Burton made it happen, dude. That's right. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. And Scotty. Beam me. Beam, beam me it happen. Beam me so, up, so, so what? Um, so you do the art teaching thing. Yes. Um, and uh, you got three years left is what I hear. Basically, You said 27? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you could, you could pull the trigger now. I mean, technically, How many sick I, days I, I you could, got? but I mean, in the state of North Carolina, you want you want to roll with full benefits. Yeah, so right. You're gonna you're gonna stay till thirty, and then, you know. My dream was to always make it like twenty eight and save up two years worth of sick days. Well, that that's exactly what I was thinking I was gonna do, yeah. and then everybody else has been like Hester, no, don't don't do that. Just go ahead and walk away with the uh, the annual leave, pay, and and have that just be pocket change. To, oh, to, I got gotcha. to roll with, so. I guess it depends on how many Zoom bombs you want to put up with. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was about to say, yes, yeah. That's thanks. Yeah. Great segue into the Zoom bombs. Oh, no, those are just an absolute treat. So. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> and even more so, just teaching teaching the visual arts right now through, uh, through the virtual aspect. Yeah. I mean, it's probably been one of the most difficult things I've ever done, but I, I started my own YouTube channel. Okay. So if you actually go on Hester's mphs uh what, what what is it it's hester's mphs uh visual arts you can see all of my my lessons that i'm doing right now yeah. as youtube channels that i end up dumping into what the platform is canvas for the kids mm -hmm. at least here in the state of north carolina yeah. it is so um the kids are able to you know watch the youtube over and over again start stop do whatever they need right. to and it's like you know actually like me being there which that coupled with my whole you know bob ross look that i've got going on yeah <laughs> um it is uh i'm trying to you know teach 100 percent of the kids mm -hmm. instead of 80 percent, and 
you know, there's a lot of, you know, the administration even said, do not give out your cell phone number. And I was like, it's impossible to mm. not do that just so you can. You know, use a remind or something. Yeah, I, I do use remind. Yeah. Uh, but I, I got savvy. I, I have one child out of every single class that I pinpointed to host the remind. That way I'm only talking to each child for each class. Okay. So that the, ki- the, the kids will actually collect the, you know, if I was gone for whatever reason. Right. Uh, they can collect attendance for me. Yeah. And all the kids know to show up. Work smarter, and, not and, harder, man. Yeah. And what you know, is um, good, some kids are in it to win it. So do the kids have a choice what name they use to sign in? Uh, they can choose any pretty much anything. That what they what want is to. what is the yeah. best PG thirteen name? What what do we got here? What the best PG thirteen name that I have signed in this year is uh, Emerson Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We're talking about trout, right? That's right. You know, we used to call the school from the lobby, and we would like leave them like notes for so and so to ride the bus home. <laughs> Emerson Biggins was never a name. Yeah, that's the first one I've seen. I haven't heard that one before. No, it's E E M M E R S U M B I G G U N Z. Oh, the Z. 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 That's a class. Don't do, love it. Oh, my. That's like <laughs> pretty Emerson good. Biggins. Yeah, I like it. It's like a mechanic Sorry. shop. It's always the Z. Oh, yeah, there you go. You it's know about Z. those mechanics. Big guns. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. That's it. Ballers. <laughs> Z. Uh, holy cow, man. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 I have, uh, let's see. Um, uh, this one actually, this was with a colleague that actually entered, and it's whole, it was um, H O L D E N D I C H T S. <laughs> now I don't know. I personally I don't know how to spell, and I don't. It, but it, I, I never did the hooked on phonics thing. So, but whatever that one was, my colleague was like, really seriously, that, that this one, this kid's trying to enter. <laughs> so you leave them in the waiting room, and yeah. then you do roll before you actually oh, dump man. them into your class. And they make that edit before they can get attended. That is, yeah, absolutely. Really, oh gosh, man. Wow. So you got to be really, really careful well, nowadays. Kids are kids are crafty. Oh, they are lazy, man. but crafty. Entertainment comes cheap as an ed- educator. Oh, every day is an absolute just just whirlwind of yeah, just wonderful. Yeah. Well, cool, well, man. Well, that's uh. That's very interesting insight there into the world of high school Zoom class with uh, Mr. Hester. So, yeah. Um, well, tell us about uh, tell us about more about Hooked Fly. Like, um, you know, where where'd you get into this? Where, where'd this idea come from? Well, I again being uh, from Boone, growing up in Boone, I, that's one of the things that I did all the time as I fished, uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents that really promoted that. And, and, uh, fortunate for me as well. I had, uh, I had a father that, that didn't necessarily fly fish, but I think he won like a, a fluger at a, a, as a door prize. And, um, and then I just kind of stole it, and we lived so close to. <laughs> we, uh, well, I'd sort like of, to say bar, sort of. borrowed indefinitely. How about that? Yeah. Um, and it's r- family. Yeah, I know. Ran to the water, uh, and I was literally lived about half a mile from uh, from the new, in in Boone, mm-hmm. and um, and I was able to do a lot of fishing, and and it was just figure it out, figure it out on my own. And I think that there's a lot to be said for oh, yeah. when, when you're Absolutely. that young and you don't necessarily have a ton of instruction from anybody. You're, you're, you know, you're listening to, to, you know, you might walk up on somebody like a older gentleman that obviously knew what the, yeah. what the heck was going on. And then you would actually just sit there and watch or, or be real inquisitive and what ask was a bunch the... of questions. And that's how I got my initiation. What was the environment it. like as a kid in that area growing up there? And this, this, I think, would go anywhere, but during that mm-hmm. time, because this is kind of like before fly fishing was so-called cool. That's what I like to say. It was before river runs through it is what we're talking about, right? Like pre... It'd be I mean, about, it'd about like, that it'd time, like, 
I started literally like when I was like seven and a half, eight years old. Okay. Because it it was the one thing that I could do. And so were people willing anything. to share info on the river with you? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I would I would watch. Yeah. And I was always really really good at mimicking um, mimicking movements mm. to to kind of put myself characteristically thinking that I was doing the same thing that they were doing. Mm-hmm. And and uh, a lot of kids do that now in terms of how they learn. They mirror. Mm-hmm. And um, I did that. Yeah. Uh, you know, early on, I, I, I wasn't. So you might have had a prince now, not knowing realize they had an Adams. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's okay, it, though. It didn't I mean, matter, casting. but uh, it was about presentation, and yeah. it was watching. And, and then sometimes, uh, you know, older gentlemen would actually just say, you know, they would impart some knowledge. Mm-hmm. You'd take the knowledge and you'd start applying it. Then, then you'd start getting your building blocks. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, if I was started at the age of eight, let's say we'll call it eight, then it's, you know, 1977. And then by 78, 79, all of a sudden I'm getting my swimming legs underneath me. I understand exactly what's going on. And by the time I'm in middle school and then ultimately into high school, I'm running my own show. And then mm-hmm. I get my license mm-hmm. at the age of 16, and then I'm off. Yeah. And I'll go to swim practice, leave swim practice, and go get a line wet. It was just – it was a really good scenario where yeah. growing up there because, you know – there was, I wasn't spending a lot of money, and I was staying out of trouble. Mm, yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, it was really good. So you were a swimmer? Yes, swam in college and, uh, and you know, kind of helped a little bit uh, a couple of times when I fell on my ass in the, in the river. Yeah. <laughs> Get those waders filling up real nice and What's thick. What's the difference between waders and Speedos? I mean, come on. <laughs> well... <laughs> Let's, About uh, three layers of Gore-Tex, Bobby. Yeah, that's right. Lycra, <laughs> nylon. Which would you rather day. swim in? Yeah. <laughs> About 80 pounds. <laughs> that's the difference. <laughs> Can you swim in waders, though? For real? Like, is that real? Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> no. Actually, you can't at all. And I, I learned a hard way one, really? one Thanksgiving on the uh, on the Green River, just, okay. outside of, just outside of Four City. Yeah. Yeah, up, up North Carolina 9. Mm. All right. Yeah. Wasn't a good scenario. But you're here. Yes. So you can swim. It was waiters. Live to tell the story, yes. <laughs> well, that's yeah. cool. Well, um, so so back to back to how Hook Fly got started. So you, you picked up Fly Pole Young, um, went to college, swam through college. Mm-hmm. Um, what next? So uh I ended up, you know, I, I coached swimming in, in high school, coached tennis in high school. Uh, I started out at Independence High School, and then uh, uh, I had a pretty good football program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, had uh, watched them in Richmond play a bunch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably... Ended up, um, let's see, probably about 2000. Ended up switching schools, went to Northwest School of the Arts in Charlotte, um, but well, had three children, and a lot of that was just focused on education and raising kids. And just yeah, I mean, you're sur- just grinding then. Yeah, just grinding. Yeah, and absolutely grinding. And I remember my uh, uh, my mentor. His name's Dean Johns, and he was, it, it, I mean, absolutely everything to me mm-hmm. in terms of what I did because I did my student teaching under him okay. as well. And I remember him telling me one time. He said, "You know, visual arts teachers, we're not we're not dummies. We we we're not linear. We're not just that. You know, that." thin in terms of our abilities we we we're the ones that actually make the world go around because we teach these kids that there is you know a way to get out of the box Mm. and that really kind of resonated with me it kind of took me to some really cool places I, i was able to uh teach a lot of kids that ended up doing really really amazing things in the design world and um and, you know, kids were going, I was sending kids to NC State. I was sending kids to Columbus College of Art and Design, Savannah mm-hmm. College of Art and Design. And uh, and I was sending kids to, to App, Western Carolina, East Carolina, uh, all the way down, UGA. I mean, yeah. all across the, the southeast. For uh, arts. Yeah, for the visual arts. And, and I remember uh, talking with uh, Dean, and he said to me, he goes, why don't you get back to doing what got you here? Mm. <coughs> 
And I kind of got, while I was in the grind, I was like, man, what, what did get me here? Mm-hmm. You know, and I always had a passion, a deep passion for fly fishing. Mm-hmm. And, and my knowledge about fly fishing is, I think it's a little bit deeper than what people are looking at as far as the, the surface or when they look at a picture and they mm-hmm. go, oh, well, that's cool. That's a different perspective. That's exactly the, the, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now yeah. is because I want people to look and go, that can't happen. That's impossible. And, yeah. and I, want, I want them to go, well, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe that is possible. So I, I change the perspective. I do a lot of inversion, do a lot of substitution. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to what Dean was saying, he's like, you need to be practicing. Practice what you preach. So after I got, I was teaching at Northwest School of the Arts and probably started about 2000, 2006. I finished my master's degree at mm-hmm. Winthrop University, Rock Vegas. And, uh, <laughs> Is and that Winthrop or Winthrop? Winthrop. And um, started going full tilt with this thing called painting yeah. and started painting my passion, which was something within the realm of fly fishing. Mm-hmm. And everything that I do, it, it's not necessarily completely bottlenecked about fly fishing. I do a lot of other stuff. I do a lot of commission work. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, most recently I've started getting into murals. A little bit bigger, a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, when That's I say a cool. little bit bigger, a little bit better, I'm talking about I'm getting better as I'm I'm working because if you're not getting better, then right, that's a problem. So if you're in the Charlotte area, where's that? Yeah. What's that mural? Where's that at that you finished? Oh, it's off of Hawthorne Lane and Central in towards downtown Charlotte, uh, Claiborne Prosthetics and Orthotics, and it's 57 foot by 20 foot mural. Wow. If you get a chance to take a look at it, it's on. If you Facebook Claiborne Prosthetics and Orthotics, and you got it on your Facebook too, right? Yeah, and Instagram. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's on the website as well yeah. under uh, community outreach stuff that I do awesome. on, on the website. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So, so you paint your passion. Um, mm-hmm. So where are you now in it? So where, where, um, where is all this paint your passion? Where, where are you at now with it? Well, it, it's kind of materialized. Like it, I was doing a lot of, um, a lot of work where, <laughs> I'm I'm doing a lot of expos now, okay. or, or trying to trying to trying to be seen more. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as I was and a starting, podcast, yeah, and a podcast, which <laughs> hopefully will help. Right. Um, I I reached out about four years ago to an individual, and it was just completely and totally random because I was so enamored with their work, and that's AD Maddox. Okay. And um, and. Most people don't realize that that's AD is a female, right? And yep. and and she very savvily uh, uses AD mm-hmm. to, to, because there are a lot of really you know barriers. Uh, uh, there, let's just say that there are a lot of people that would think otherwise mm-hmm. about buying a piece of artwork if a like a female was painting in a realm of mm-hmm. that was completely and totally monopolized by you know yeah old white guys, mm-hmm. right? So, um, she does amazing work and the really cool thing is I reached out and she took the time out of her schedule to call me back Mm -hmm. one afternoon and she was so incredibly kind and so giving and so interested in what I was doing based upon, you know, the, the, the characteristics of what I was putting together. Yeah. Um, that made all the difference in the world. And then all of a sudden it was, it was lights on. And then I reached out after that, I reached out to Derek DeYoung and he was incredibly kind as well and, and didn't hesitate to say, you know what, dude, you got, you've got some, a little bit of game going on, keep doing what you're doing. And you got to understand that, you know, I've still, I've still got probably 10 years on Derek or eight years on Derek. And then I think AD is. You know, right there with me, mm-hmm. uh, age-wise. I'm not certain. I mean, we're not going to talk about age. <laughs> that's, that's only a number. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's been really nice hearing from them. It's been really sure. nice yeah. getting input from them, and also kind of saying, you know what, dude, the, the the type of work that you're doing and where the way you're tailoring it is not within anybody's niche. Mm-hmm. So I've 
created my own place yeah. within this realm of fly fishing. And I'm not necessarily promoting, you know, alcoholism or, or uh, alcohol just in general. But, I mean, you know, there, there are a lot no, of... There, I, it, you, you've got, like, the wine glass and the martini glass or something like that. Bourbon. Yeah, right, the bourbon. Got, that, that's right. Well, some people actually enjoy, after a long day of fishing, they, uh, you know, a two-finger yeah. whiskey or a two-finger bourbon mm-hmm. or, or, you know, uh, a wine, a glass of wine. Yeah. Yeah. So being able to take those things and couple them together... Or use like a like a, a highball glass, and the water ends up emulating part of the river, and the ice cubes are part of the rocks, mm-hmm. and then you have a brown coming out from under the rocks. I mean, it, it fuses and kind of melds those two mm-hmm. worlds together, so people can go, "Whoa, mm-hmm. wait a minute, that's that's me, yeah. that's me, that's I'm all about that right there." And that's or, awesome. or the smoke coming off the, a lit cigar that they've had and the smoke actually transforming itself into a rising brown. Mm. Um, it, you know, it's things like that. It's that inversion and the substitution factor that's actually kind of taken me to a, a yeah. different place, the way that I deliver my yeah. message to the viewer. So it's cool. Well, we're just we're just showing uh, on the the visual side, the YouTube side, uh, we we're just running some uh, images of, of your art. Yeah. Uh, so people can kind of see, uh, but definitely they need to go to your website to see more. Um, where can they go while we're on that real quick? Yeah, What's your website? www.hookedflyco.com. That's H O O K E D. Hooked. Yeah, hooked. <laughs> yeah, hooked. <laughs> F L Y C O dot com. Cool. So if you get a chance, and uh, please, you know, my cell phone's on there. Anybody that goes and takes a look and. If you you fall in love with something that I don't necessarily have an inventory, um, and there's another. I want to text you how much for the big picture yeah. Emerson Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> nice for, for everybody out there. You are in fuego today. Oh. For everybody that's not watching YouTube, that's just listening. What's your Facebook and Instagram too? Yep. Uh, Instagram. Um, well, on Facebook it's Hooked Fly Company. Okay. Dot com, and then. Uh, and then on Insta, it's B Hester dot hooked fly mm-hmm. company. And you should be able to find me pretty quick. Um, you know, I've been blessed with a lot of people that are interested in, in my work. And a lot of work is sold most recently. And I'm gaining uh, a lot of steam with, within the realm that mm-hmm. in which I'm working right now. And it's it's been really, really nice. I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm doing the, the fly show in Atlanta this year, you know you know, willing that, that COVID doesn't, you know, cripple us again yeah. and, um, or push us back or whatever the case might be. But I'll also be in Mesquite, Texas at the very end of February, uh, with the, uh, fly fishing and brew festival in, 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 in Tejas. So it's, you know, I'm constantly in the shop working right now. As a matter of fact, I, I'm working on a commission with, uh, you'll get a kick out of this deal. Um, you know, the Kyle Bush app state car that won the X. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, somebody commissioned me to do that app state car. Really? Uh, and uh, I've got a really cool perspective I'm, I'm working on right now. So that's anybody cool. in NASCAR world that's, that's, uh, an app state fan, you ought to, yeah. you can, you can check that out or give me a telephone call and I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. That's cool. And I'm so, not breaking any laws with NASCAR. No, no, yeah. not <laughs> at all. You're, you're not licensed, at all because I know that they, up. I'm licensed up, baby. That's right. Permitted. <laughs> the, um, so that's, that's, you know, Painting your passion, twenty-seven yes. years teaching. Yep, um, mm-hmm. man, you're you're a young spry guy. I mean, where, I mean, where, where are you going? Where are you going with this next? What's 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 the future for Hooked Fly? Well, you know, I always said that I wanted a seat at the table. Like, I mean, people you're that have that. I know. <laughs> You guys this is are the welcome. Table. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for setting the bar low. <laughs> You're welcome, and thanks again no for having me. We'll see y'all later. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, the, with the my work ethic, uh, and as I get close to finishing my career in education, it should be a seamless transition mm-hmm. with the overlap that of which I've created right now with my painting. And I, I you know. I, I still love the commissions. I still love it where people give me full autonomy and let me let so me. So having have more time in retirement, and as far as retiring from teacher, you think this thing's going to just? I mean, you're just going to be pumping out stuff like. I, I, I'm hoping that I'll find a new new place where I'm at, and mm-hmm. and when people actually go into Google searches, 
my stuff actually starts popping up. Right, right. That's it, and I'm humbled. Mm-hmm. I'm humbled by that, mm-hmm. and I'm not bigger than my britches. And you know, I'm not going to say I'm self-taught because you know I, I had my fanny handed me in in in, in college mm-hmm. in in my crits, and you know I got my BFA from UNC Charlotte, and then I finished my education degree at App, and um, I've got. I've had a lot of people around me in in the visual arts as well as in education, you know, shaking their finger, you know, you're not don't be bigger than yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. stay in your lane, make okay. sure that yeah. but you also can part, you know, you can you can pave some new paths yeah, while you're you, doing you what you're doing. You got to grow there somewhere. And that that's part of my growth, being able to commit a little bit extra time mm-hmm. in front of uh in front of the canvas. That's a really big deal to me because I want Shannon one day to walk up and go, Dad Gummit, man, that's really, really, really innovative. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. If he hasn't already, which I don't, I don't know. And Bobby, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to be able to go. You're on the spot, Shannon. Have you? <laughs> oh well, there you go. It's high pressure interview here. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still caught up on the Emersons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was like 26 minutes ago, folks. <laughs> yeah. That's so, I'm, hey, when you get old, things slow down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really slow. slow. Yes, that's that's it. It. Yeah. about like our internet sometimes. <laughs> yeah. As you can probably see in the video later. Yeah, especially in Bryson City, puts a little pauses in it. Yeah, absolutely. I still ain't got this microphone right. Did I answer your question, Dylan? Man, you did. Yeah, yeah. that's so a little bit more time. Yeah, it's a definitely. Little, a, there's want, no wrong answer. Always want to get better. Yeah, well, that's always right. Always want to get better. That's good. Always want to get better, get better, get better, and I'm humbled by those people that have helped me and you know uh, you, people want to reach out and they want to talk shop i'm all about mm-hmm. making time I, I i try to make time for my kids like on my way up here today uh my kids were blowing up my phone because their their work is so late mm-hmm. right now this first quarter kids are scrambling right now mm-hmm. to try to get stuff so in. yeah students not yeah. your kids yeah my students yeah. i should say yeah my students um and you know, I just make myself available. I'm answering every single text. I'm answering every single call. While you're driving? Yeah, absolutely. No, I have Bluetooth, man. <laughs> Let it go. Easy. That's how I use it too. Nice. That's right. Yeah. You got a 14 year old car. Sorry. Right you can yeah. talk and text while you <laughs> drive. Right. Actually, I have no car. No. So. <laughs> no talking. No text. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Well, thanks so much for for coming on and sitting with us for a little bit and letting us harass you. And, yeah, uh, I'm gonna flash up your interrogate some of these you. paintings again while we're absolutely going through stuff. Now you can't see it, so you can't really tell us. There's some fish in the sky over a forest. You could probably come over here mountains. and talk into my mic if you wanted to kind of describe what's. Oh yeah, that's the that was uh, the Linville Viaduct, and I always thought how cool would it be when I was standing under the viaduct on the backside of Grandfather, when you're looking over the Blue Ridge, how the the water. Uh, I mean, the the mountain range actually looks as if it could be the bottom of the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see these monster rainbows actually just, you know, patrolling. That's the coolest one. And, uh, and then, and the, I don't know if you can see, but in the clouds on the one of the Linville Viaduct, there's a there's a fly that's actually sitting in the cloud. So the, cloud, cool. the clouds are actually, you see, that's my inversion, my substitution mm-hmm. by taking stuff and making people go, uh, okay. You got pictures of all these on your website? Yeah, everything yeah, so is on the wanna, website. If you so want to look at these in more detail than, than just being on like a slideshow. So when you were so when you were young, yeah, absolutely. Was was you just like a doodler or something? I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, that's really. I, I, that's I mean, a, were you I a mean, loser or a doodler? <laughs> were you a, we're just wondering. Were you a doodler? <laughs> I was both. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah. I mean, uh, and Bobby I went into that. So. Quite proud of that loser yeah. doodler uh-huh. thing. Oh, mm-hmm. Um. I doodled all the time. Um, they thought that there was something really severely wrong with me. And if my mom actually really does hear this podcast, she will affirm this. Because I don't know if you remember back in the day, there, there used to be a CAT and a DAT, the Differential Aptitude Test. And yeah. were, it was bubble cat sheets. Test. Yeah, yeah, there the was cat a, yeah we, the, took the, the we took the cat. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. You remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. And then you had oh, A, B, C, or D, and you filled out the bubbles, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, well, yeah. I used to make designs. I used to go A, B, C, D, C, B, A. And just make like little arrows. So I, I mean, I wasn't reading the yeah. questions. I was just filling in dots to make designs. When and I, they when were I like, took it, I called it a Christmas tree. There you go. <laughs> it's a you sideways, just said it's art. Yeah, you yeah, just said it's Christmas art. tree, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, on math tests, I you know, I my mind would just go poof that way, and I would just start kind of 
making designs with the numbers and, cool. and, and drawing. And they thought there, there was a lot wrong. Well, there was a, a lot wrong with me, no question about it. But, uh, you know, I, I brought it back in. We brought it full circle and got it together. So who, uh, so who enabled you to go down this path at an early age or maybe even encouraged you to do what, that, what you're doing now? Mom and dad, they saw that the, the aptitude. They saw it there. And, I, I mean, most people could care less, but I was adopted. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they wanted to facilitate all things good based upon where, you know, those tangible skill sets were. Mm -hmm. And when they saw it, they were like, whoa. I remember mom saying, man, you just were a perfectionist. You wanted things to be right one way. And, and I, I, to this day, even when I was 35 and I was talking with her and I was like, so what was the big deal about that? She goes, your ability, your proportion, like size relationships with Mm -hmm. things, Mm-hmm. was just uncanny. And then I automatically understood thirds, you know, the way that, you know, Cezanne, Renoir, all the, the, the masters had painted. I was able to already understand thirds, foreground, middle ground, background, like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know why I was able to understand thirds. Like, you know, if you're looking at scenes for Giverny mm-hmm. and, and like the lily pads from Monet, mm-hmm. you know, it's in thirds. Yeah, I mean, you look at Renoir, Degas, it's in thirds, but you know, it was just something that I, it was innate, I guess. I don't, I don't know, Mm -hmm. but my biological mom found out that my biological mom was an artist. And I guess she told me my biological dad was a swimmer and then, oh yeah. And then that's when everything just went sideways for me. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. So anyway, that's pretty cool. It's it's really wild scenario. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. I mean, so it, go it, ahead. At least somebody you know they they encouraged you instead of discouraging you because yeah. it could have went the total opposite direction. You are correct. This. It could have it could have gone sideways. Yeah. Um, I'm not really certain that that it would have ended up this way had my mom and dad not you know really 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 they I mean they were constantly throwing kerosene on the fire mm-hmm. constantly which was a great thing That's yeah. awesome. and cool. uh I'm blessed I'm so blessed not only to, to grow up in Boone and have the environment that actually gave me both of these entities mm-hmm. uh you know my fly fishing I mean, it's like a symbiotic relationship yeah. without one the other is right. not going to exist period right. into discussion and that that fly fishing thing how it meld it just fused itself in with the painting and then where I'm going with it right now and creating my niche because yeah. I don't know anybody in the country that's actually doing what I'm doing right now. And there's a lot of people that are going to go, oh, well, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. And they're going to start trying and they're, they're going to they're gonna go and they're going to get notoriety and yeah. just because of their skill set. But just everybody out there in La La Land, I got there first. <laughs> so you know. That's, why. that's awesome, man. Yeah. And nobody can take that away from you, honestly. No, absolutely. absolutely. So I enjoy yeah. it. And thanks for the question. Yeah, I, 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 I think that, question. you know, D- Dale has an education background. Obviously, you do there. But absolutely. I, re- mm-hmm. I recall, I mean, all of us recall sitting in a classroom with somebody who sat at the back of the class who never did the work. But, I mean, they're they're just turning out some amazing stuff on their notebook cover or, and stuff like yeah. that. But right. they were kind of mm-hmm. like shunned Trapper to keeper. the You know, they mm-hmm. were just shunned to the side a little bit. Do you see that? Uh, in 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 the school system, when school is on a regular thing, do you kind of like maybe kind of identify kids in the walking uh, down the hallway, and you're uh, like, golly, you know, I that kid has got, but maybe they don't know it. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, I call them sleepers. I know for a fact that they've got it. It's visceral. It's mm-hmm. in their gut, and I've seen it just because they've just kind of pushed the pen around a little bit, and I'm like, dad, gummit. Really, man, I I see that, and I'm I'm in tune because I was that kid. I know it. I yeah. know exactly when I see it too. That's and awesome. that's a great question, Shannon, because I see these kids and you know, it, if they're not, you know, getting the support from from me, um, then I'm hoping that moms and dads and family mm-hmm. are giving them the support that they need to be able to go do because I was that kid in the back that doodled. I was that kid that was a loner. I was the kid that, you know, that picked his nose and smelled and, and, you know, still, you know, 
it didn't really do much of anything. We were going to talk to you about that. Yeah, th- I appreciate that. Was my, that. that was my I next question. question. Yeah. I did actually shower yeah. before I got here, yeah. guys. I appreciate that. Um, but uh, those sleepers yeah. are the ones that actually, those are the ones that, that figure it out after they're, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, and they dig. And they, they, they eventually go, hey, I, I got this this talent and I I want to I want to do something with it and most recently over the last 15 years the amount of kids that call me up and come back has been exponential for the 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 first 13 so Mm -hmm. um so that's cool yeah yeah absolutely it's just I think we see it here in the shop when people come in that are maybe Mm. coming to to college and they just kind of have the fishing oh yeah you know whether it's they just have it, you can just like look at that. We had one come like, in a couple of weeks ago. Now we hired him. Is he on board? Yeah, I mean, I, that, uh, was, uh, so you you saw somebody oh, came man, in with kid, just nasty came skill. In and, yeah, he was like six skill. Uh, yeah, he just started naming some places that he's figured out on his own, and that impressed us. I mean, we're like, what you know about that creek? Okay, yeah, yeah maybe we should talk. So, oh, that's that's yeah. good. You see, yeah. those are the those are the sleepers. Those are the ones that dig. Yeah, I don't think he would have sawed it out. I don't think so either. Kept raking leaves. I, I think you need to keep fishing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So is he going to steer a boat or is he going to actually give you He's going to grind in the shop for a little while. Grind in the shop. Yeah. Pays dues. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, we're Put excited to have him Put your time in, Junior. That's it. Put your time in. <laughs> That's it. So, I just think that, um, you know, obviously some great points there, but most importantly, um, you know, be supportive. Yeah. I, I think uh, that, I mean, everybody out there in life, whether it's art or music or uh, whatever it is, man, and people have skill sets. Um, oh, yeah. There's things Everybody I would does. love to do that I can't do, and uh, but but encouraging those people to go down that path. And it sounds like that's what's happened to you. You're a success story, and and, and you're trying to do the same with the sleepers and things like that. So that's mm-hmm. that's awesome, man. So. But it doesn't always work out your way. My mom's an art teacher, very artistic. Mm-hmm. Dude, I can't draw. I cannot draw. I can't hardly draw stick, man. I mean, I think that, uh, th- I mean, it's based upon application. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. It, like if you were to, uh, if you were to dig, meaning your interest and right, your passion yeah. was in that place, mm-hmm. in that space, you would actually, you'd be able yeah. to kind of turn it loose and, and figure out, hey, this is this. Yeah. And Dale, if you really need some help, I have a YouTube channel. Let me repeat that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hester's. Uh, Hester's. MPHS. I'm going to go look at Park it, High man. School Visual Arts. I tell you, I am going to put my daughter on it. She she is Absolutely. very artistic put, at a young put, age. Put them yeah. on it. And, yeah. and it's it's basic stuff right now. But I will tell you, the fun stuff, and I, I'm, I'm actually dealing where kids are at home, mm-hmm. and they don't have they don't have yeah, supplies. Right. So I've got to even be more creative based upon how I figure out how I can get kids to do and then make work. So you're like mission control to Apollo 13. All right, what do we have? That's that's exactly right. What do you have right. with you? Yeah, you know? that's right. I want you to fix this yeah. with a bottle opener, <laughs> you know, a rubber band, yeah. some gum, and, you know, a paper clip. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. That's cool. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a, a, a an incredible journey, uh, and it's only it's only going to get better. Well, that's, I mean, to make it twenty seven years, you can't do it without having passion and and caring for the students and and making those relationships. So, you made it a lot longer than I did, dude. Yeah, <laughs> five years, just, magic just, burnout yeah. number. I saw all I had in me. So you, was, you're doing great, it, dude. I was in it to win it, and uh, yeah. well, I'm still in it to win it. So. And I'm going to continue deal. to fish. And that's, I, awesome. that's another big thing. I want to get better. I mm-hmm. really want to get better. I mean, in I about know, three I, years, you're going to have some time to put in it. Yeah. Doggone right I am. Are you going yeah, to no, keep teaching past 30? Listen. I mean, yes, not. I mean, you don't have to quit at 30. No, I know. Uh, it, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Double, double dipping sounds uh, really good to me sure. to, in terms of being able to go down that path. But, uh, but my, I'm looking my double dipping to, to, to really get better. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've got three years to set myself up to really explode this Mm -hmm. and just be at a completely different level. Cause I know that every time I get in front of raw canvas, I'm going to get better. And if you don't have that mindset, you become complacent and anything that you become complacent with is not worth anything. Yep. Good deal, man. Good episode, boys. It really is. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks so much. Making a trip up. 
Anybody Absolutely. that wants to call the cell phone and talk shop, I'd love you, for you to do that. 704-519-5757. Also, check out the, uh, check out the website at www.hookedflyco.com. Got you. I'll try to get that stuff up in the uh, show link so people can click on yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on uh, social media, and, too. And do that right there. That's even better. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> Gotta love that face, too. Mm. Awesome. That's like the back of the. Yeah. That's the back of the card right there. Yeah. Do you see that, ladies and gentlemen? That's me getting hooked. Hold on, I gotta zoom in on it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you nice. go. Zoom in on it. Awesome. Sweet. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for having me. This is yeah, man, an absolute. Great. Hope you get some fish while you're up here tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna be the first on the water tomorrow, so all the you other yahoos are uh, gonna be. You're going to Costco. I'm going you're, to Costco. You're, you're going to be in bed, and Shannon, you fish. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the water. I got a water next two days. With I got to fix nice, my deck. Yes. <laughs> was it? it nice. Was Ricky Bobby say, "If you ain't first, first you last. last." That's right. Hey, <laughs> right. what do I do with my hands? That's right. <laughs> what, do I, what, what, what do I? What do I do with my hands? <laughs> was it was Emerson's in his pit crew? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Just or, yeah, want to remind the folks, October seventeenth, Normice oh, yeah. demo days here at the shop uh, from ten to four on a Saturday. Be sure to stop five for that. Already know some folks. Hopefully, we're in phase two point seven by then, so we can we're, have more than we're three. We're three, 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 three today. Man, did he you let us do it, hey, you, man? So you haven't been outside <laughs> since you come in because <laughs> you didn't hit lunch. Everybody's just, sitting in the road. They're now. sitting in the road with uh, the restaurant. That's why that happened. Yes, but they could have done that a while back. Well, they right? Out there measuring and the other the day. The town of Silva would have let them, but now the governor's letting them. It sounds so, like so. The town of Silva wasn't good enough. Right. Yeah. Had to. They had to wait for the boy Roy to tell him. Yeah. Anyways, oh, October seventeenth. October seventeenth yeah, is coming. We, about we two, it's, it's coming, man, for sure. So great, uh, Ryan, man. Thanks for coming up. It's another great show there, Dylan, Bobby. I think we covered everything there. Yeah, we're good. Absolutely, to go. man. Thanks. It's about time to go get something neat. I think. Rub it up, dub. Rub it up, dub. Y'all. Time to eat. Everybody, hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Tuckcast with a splash of bourbon, sponsored by the Norvice Fly Time System. Be sure to follow Tuckasichi Fly Shop on all the major social media platforms for the latest happenings and latest videos. Have a question or comment? Send them to info at tuckflyshop.com or feel free to drop us a, a mail at Tuck Fly Shop, 530 West Main Street, Silva 28779. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you folks all next week.